Good morning. And welcome to another bright sunny day here in Winnipeg. And we had a pretty good afternoon yesterday. An, an interesting afternoon. First of all, I did finally show you this and you'll see it in the rollback <clears throat> after I got it, you know, the two coats of paint on it and so on. I kept saying, we'll put it on the rotator and rotate it <laughs> or something to that effect. But you know what? I didn't put it on the rotator. I showed it in a new way well, you, and you'll see it in the rollback. Also in the rollback, I did look at that uh, fiber optic cable that the guy laid yesterday at least a little sample that he gave me. And uh, what I've got in here is isopropyl alcohol and I've got what I believe is the fiber optic. Now I'm probably going to look at it with the microscope. I don't know how much of it I'll be able to show you. Uh, maybe I can put on the super macro and you will be able to look at it and see what it looks like. Um, anyway, we are going to be putting on mushroom vents today after we turn the page. Uh, yeah, uh, it looks like I don't see anything except mushroom vents, so we probably won't be needing these. At least not in step 33. Yeah, it's, it's all mushroom vents, but um, there is a, what's the word, plethora? <laughs> there is a plethora of mushroom vents. <laughs> I can't believe how many they had on that ship. I mean, uh, well, I guess that's the way they did it back in the 20s. <laughs> this thing was designed, I think, in the 20s, even though it was built a little later. Uh, now, uh, I, I think we should just sort of roll back and, and see how it is we got to that place. And, uh, yeah, let's just, let's just roll back and then we'll continue on. Now, I am having a real problem getting going with my roll back here this evening. It's already nine minutes after eight. I, I really didn't do a whole lot this afternoon except put the second coat on a lot of stuff. We'll, we'll take a look at that maybe in a few minutes. But I was messing around with this piece of pipe or not pipe, but uh, wire that the guy gave me. I, I guess what made me say the word pipe is that the jacket, which I thought I was going to be able to just, you know, take my, my uh, number 11 blade and just sort of slice along it and it would come apart. Oh no, it's, this is like PVC piping. It's exactly like it. It feels like it. It cuts like it. Um, it's stiff like it. And on the inside, I, I did cut through it with my butcher knife. I put the butcher knife on, on the cutting board and then I pounded it with a hammer uh, at a place on the butcher knife where if I dulled it, it wouldn't be that important, but it, it didn't dull. Just, just, let me, just let me get rid of this. Anyway, so it's about, I'm guessing, five feet long, if you can think in feet. <laughs> okay. So I got a couple of pieces off of it. We'll put the macro lens on and look. It looks like there's a, well, I'll just, I'll talk about it when I get the macro lens on. Uh, anyway, bottom line is this, this is not going the way I thought it was going to. So we are not able, not going to be able to look at it the way I had hoped. Uh, but I did find what I believe is the fiber optic. Now, Let's get our uh, macro lens on here and get in as close as we reasonably can. Okay, this uh, piece that I've cut off here, it's approximately oh, two to three centimeters long. And we're looking at the end of it here. Now right, right in here is a, is a copper wire. I'm guessing about maybe 20, 22 gauge or even thinner. You can't see it, but but there's a copper wire runs along in this in the outside of the jacket here. Then we've got some sort of really hard plastic here. There's the same sort of thing over here. 
then right in the middle here we have what I believe is the is the fiber optic now the fiber optic is suspended in a gel which is in a tube and the tube is is several times bigger than the fiber optic see if I can pull it out here Maybe I, I'm going to try and turn this sideways a little bit without it going out of focus Now you can see that it's it's in a gel. Now I don't know if that's water soluble gel and it'll freeze in the winter time or or what. But anyway, that's what we got going on there. Now I I think that this blue thing is although it doesn't seem to be hollow. I always thought that a fiber optic was hollow. But uh maybe this is something different. Now, once again, I, I'm just assuming that this is the fiber optic. It, it might not be. Okay, that, this is about the best I can show you this. Uh, and like I said, I was hoping that I was going to be able to take this jacket off of it and expose these different components, you know, like the, the brass uh, or the copper wire and then these things, but it, it just doesn't come apart. It's molded together. And... Uh, it's made by the Corning people, apparently. And uh, from what I remember, Corning makes really good stuff. This is almost out. This is almost out. Maybe I'll take it out and I'll look at it later myself under the microscope. That that might uh, that might uh, reveal something. Okay. Uh, that, like I say, that that's about the best I can show it to you. Got an empty tomato jar here. And it's pretty much the way you saw it. In fact, it's exactly the way you last saw it. When I had the macro lens on. I want to get that gel off of there. I don't want to break it because I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is actually glass. Uh, where is my isopropyl? There we go. Now we, <clears throat> we don't need very much. I guess this lid goes on there a little better. Before we spill it, okay. I don't. I don't think I want to take out too much more time. I'm hoping that the isopropyl will cut whatever that uh, that gel was, but I, I don't think I have the time right now to. Uh, look at this under the microscope, uh, microscope and do a good job. Starting to get kind of tired here. Seems to be the story of my life this time of night. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, <laughs> okay. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll deal with this tomorrow. But um, maybe we should uh, take out a couple of minutes and just see how our second coat turned out. Now, after I had uh, given this smaller piece its second coat, I was I was realizing that the the module that sits on the top here, you know, like the conning tower with the bridge and everything on it, it actually went in a little bit. So I thought I better check that out. So when I placed it on here, I realized that if I didn't paint this little section right here, uh, you know, it, it was bare plastic was going to be showing not for not a lot but but some okay now on on the back here is is where the uh, tripod goes and I, I do believe that that once we get some some stuff on on this mounted on here it, it's gonna look pretty good in other words it, it'll be busy
next day. Okay. Uh, the other mod was over by the uh, where the TV used to be. Now uh, we got to get this glued on here, um, and then and then and then I do believe that that we when we turn the once this is glued on we turn the page, and we put mushroom vents on like crazy here. Let's let's take this off before we have an accident. That would be too bad. Oh, this this also has a, a second coat, the upper section, and I, I think it's it's 99% good. I'm I'm sure that if I looked, I'll be I'll be able to see maybe a little bit of photo etch glinting through somewhere, but I don't think so. I think that generally speaking, we we've got this we've got this pretty good. Um, okay, enough of that. No, I've never done it exactly like this before. As long as I don't go too fast and get it all blurry. We, sh we should be able to see how the paint jug came out there. I, I, I think it's alright. I'm just sort of eyeballing where I think it should be in focus, so I hope it's working out okay. I'm getting stuck on something here. There we go. It's probably where I <laughs> spilled the CA glue on the cloth. Okay, you get the idea. Well, it is morning. And we've got to glue this down now. And I've been thinking about it, like what kind of glue should I use? And I know a, a person would like to just use something like the quick setting <laughs> and have a, you know, so I can get it glued down right away. However, the quick setting is going to wick its way into the paint on the decking and, and up the walls of the superstructure. So I think what I'm going to be doing is using the uh, Revell Contacta. And... Uh, I don't think I need to glue it here on the on this uh, nose section on the on the front. I think if I just glue it along the edges on the inside of here and here, and then put it down, and then we'll put a a weight on it and just sort of let it sit. I was I was thinking it's kind of it's kind of too bad that I I can't uh, do it quickly because. Um, th then I'd be able to get at the mushroom vents right away. But you know what? Looking at it now, I'm realizing that I could still get at the mushroom vents in the back section while this is drying. And I'm, I'm wondering about what do I uh, use to hold this down so it's going to be nice and tight. And uh, I think this thing weighs about five pounds. Uh, the, the, it already fits pretty good, but if, if you can see here that it's going to take just a little bit of pressure there in the center to get it to fasten down onto the deck right, right in this area here. The, uh, the main deck seems to bow a little bit. Now on the other hand, I suppose what I could do is, is maybe somehow support it from the bottom. Uh, where's my little block of wood that I had here? Well, this isn't the one I was thinking of, but it'd be something, something like this. Yeah, that that actually that actually works better. Yeah, that that actually works better. I could find something else other than this, or maybe two of these. Anyway, we'll come up with something. Okay, let's just sort of do a dry run here and see how this is going to go. Got one in the back here to uh, just 
just to give it a little bit more stability. Now, if after we we get the glue on, I put it on like this. I, I really only get one shot at this, so that's why I want to make sure that I get it right the first time. Now we want to put most of the pressure right here. You notice how how it goes down onto the deck. So I put this like this. Oh, by the way, this thing here, I know that I know that from here to here is the closest focusing distance when I have my wide angle lens set to 14 millimeter, which incidentally it is at the moment. Now, then this would go on here. And, and that should hold that tight. And then I can probably mess around with the, with the mushroom vents over here. At least that's the plan. Okay, well, here we go. And uh, as I've said before, I, at least I think I said it before, and if I didn't, I should have. I really only got one shot at this. Now, <clears throat> I think if I put the uh, the glue just along the the inside, and it it will have a tendency to run down. No, I don't want to get it on the cloth, do I? Alright, now we turn it over, it should just sort of hang. I do have a, a certain amount of working time with this. Right in here is where it's going to have to be uh, its best. Just give it a little bit more right here. I'm not worried about the end so much. Okay, now here we go. Okay, I'm pretty sure you might say that that is seated. And at this moment, I can envision that liquid glue working its way down the inside of the uh, bulkheads, and uh, it will eventually melt onto the deck. Now, uh, I, I realize that it's not as strong as if I was to have gone all the way around, but I don't need to glue it back here. It is already being pressed on here. I don't think this is going to come up because the way the way this uh, is bowed, um, this is already going to be tight enough. And that way I don't need to worry about the glue oozing out into the deck tan and so on. At least that's my thinking at the moment here. Okay, at first I was going to turn everything around so that it'll be right to the manual, but I think I can probably start at the back here and work my way forward. And we are sort of a mirror image situation here. And all of these, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, these are all the G5s, which is these small ones here. And the only one that is different is the, uh, okay, we've got a, a G23 right here. Well, you probably can't see it from that far back, but it, there's, there's, there's quite a difference in the size of the hole here. So I don't think I'm going to get them mixed up. And uh, if I was to accidentally put one of these vents on, on the wrong place, uh, what, what the only time it would be serious is if I put a small one in a big hole 
well then the big the big one would not fit in a small hole uh, and uh, that could give me a problem later on um, I'm going to put the macro lens on and uh, just see how much difficulty we're going to have plugging these in I don't think we have put any mushroom vents in oh yeah we did yeah we did on the main deck we, we did a ton of them okay let's just uh, recompose here a little bit and uh, see what we can do now I'm looking nice and close at my mushroom vent here and I'm realizing that I did not do a very good job of uh, rounding it over in other words it's uh, okay I want to get it down in this hole maybe I should be holding it from the top instead of from the sides yeah I think they're gonna go okay I don't know why they wouldn't now I think what we'll do is we'll see if I can't just put a very small amount of probably extra thin I don't think the quick setting I'll just use the extra thin here and try and put just a little bit on the deck now if you remember when we did this on the other one it did kind of run a little bit but it seems to me that it it, it almost uh, you know appeared to be like weathering so I'll just put this back here for the time being that way I won't lose it now where is my extra thin okay that's the quick setting okay I got it it's a good thing I can uh, edit out the dead spots okay now we just want to put just a little bit in there is that if that's possible maybe that wasn't enough having trouble letting go of it. There we go. Now we'll get it straight. Sort of work it around a little bit. You can see the glue is still liquidy. Well, it'll, it'll, the plastics will, will meld together. And unless a person really was to knock this hard, it, it won't come out. Okay, now I'm moving from my left to my right. Ooh, got a little bit heavy duty there, didn't I? Now that that glue that you see there, that that will evaporate. Okay, I'm gonna try and grab the grab one that's uh, by the head of it instead of by the side of it. See, that's gonna be easier. Problem is, then I, I can't see it. Maybe these are not the tweezers to use. Yeah, I can sort of see it. And one more.
Now we need a number, let's see, what is it? Number 23. Okay, we need a 23. And it's going to go right, right here. Now, just let me look down on these. Do these all look straight, or does one look like it's slumped over a little bit? Okay, well, there we go. That's a beginning. Now there's only 7,326 left to go. Now this might be sort of described as a disclaimer. And uh, if I remember, I'll explain why I'm calling it a disclaimer. Now, yesterday when I was viewing uh, yesterday's episode, I was looking at this particular scene right here, and I was looking at this tree in the way in the background, and then I was noticing the branches sort of swaying in the wind, and they were not what you would call smooth. They were not clear. They were sort of uh, like the same scene was being repeated over and over again, uh, and uh, they were kind of... Well, they weren't like 60 frames a second. They were more like about 10 or 15 frames a second. I used to know what the word is for that, but I, I've forgotten what it is. But there is an actual word for that where, uh, where a video is compressed really badly. And uh, any, anyway, this is what usually happens. After I've done my final edit, you've, t you've heard me talking about doing the final edit and getting uploaded to YouTube uh, probably to death, right? Okay, so what I do is I go down here where there's a little rocket and I click on the rocket. And then it takes me over here where I can select the different ways that you can you can upload your video. So I was selecting the YouTube one and I'd select the 4K one and then I just leave it like that. And that's that's what I would would upload or render rather. And then I would upload what what came out of it. Now, uh what I did here is as I took this very same video again without changing a single frame and I selected this one here H265 and and it does it in QuickTime instead of MP4 and it does, it does a different codec H265 instead of 264 now this will render a, a video that is exactly three times bigger well maybe a teensy bit smaller than three times but it's it's a big video uh, so not not in length but in uh, in uh, quality, and and then when I viewed it, I wasn't noticing this uh, stuff going on in the branches. So that's what we're going to do here today. Now, if the video is three times bigger, not longer, that means it's going to take three times longer to upload, and it might take YouTube three times longer to process it. But I don't think so because I've done this sort of thing before, only not quite like this. Now the disclaimer is, if today's video is late. It could be, this is why. <laughs> you know, I think I'm going to uh, wrap today's episode up. Uh, being as I've made these new changes in, uh, in YouTube in the settings. And uh, so on, I, I did not realize that when I was selecting YouTube, and yeah, I was selecting 4K, and yeah, it was 60 frames a second. But I didn't realize that the quality of the uh, upload was was so bad. I was I was blaming YouTube for about two months now, and just yesterday I realized it was it was probably me. So I'm hoping that that I will end up getting results that I I feel are what, quality videos, not 8K quality, but pretty good. Anyway, <clears throat> enough about that. And uh, yeah, we'll. Uh, Maybe take a little look, little look at this in our rollback tomorrow. I don't know how it's going to go. I do plan on working at this uh, and finishing this off uh, this afternoon and this evening. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.